look fantastic. Thank I'm happy you. to see you. I'm happy to see you too. You were here recently with your husband Dax yep. and uh, professing your love for other lots of other people. You have a lot of crushes. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. If you don't have a lot of crushes, you are lying. I'm just gonna say that right now. He has a lot of crushes too. We just are, I guess now, one of the only couples uh, that talk about our crushes with each other. And I think that's healthy. I do too. And yeah. everybody, some people think it's weird, but I'm like, but no, there's a very, there's a trust factor. I love him, but like, I'm married, I'm not dead. Like other people are attractive. Yeah. 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 You were, um, you played Five Second Rule uh, with us, and we learned other things about you that I want to have questions. So let's show it. And okay. Then follow up. That's why you're here because I like to follow up. Follow ups. Got okay, it. Let's got see. it. Got it. Tell us three things of Dax's you wish you could throw out. Oh boy. Oh, his nicotine toothpicks, <laughs> all the tissues next to his bed, <laughs> and <laughs> his. Uh, this is worth getting out. His literal. 700 coffee pods that are sitting next to the side of our bed. So obviously you didn't do that in five seconds, but it was important for me to hear those things because I'm curious. So next to the bed yes. are his toothpicks. Yes. I understand that. He doesn't smoke anymore, so it's nicotine toothpicks. You got it. So he puts that in his mouth before mm -hmm. hopefully not falling asleep because that would be like horrible. <laughs> Sometimes I have to remove it from his oh, mouth when he That's falls. terrible. Okay. <laughs> you don't... He likes to live on the edge. Well, he sure does. Look, he's not drinking anymore. I'll remove a toothpick from his mouth any day, yeah. you know? Yeah. So then, then there's tissues. Yes. He just has a lot of, like, um, you know, air filter stuff. And so at night, when he's clearing his throat or his nose from the smog in LA, he's blowing his nose and then puts it there and then blows his nose, puts it there. And this is like, you know, we're watching Yellowstone or whatever, and he's blowing his nose and putting it there. And, blow and then in the morning, there's just like a mound of tissues. And it doesn't, it's not like it piles up where, you know, you can't move, but every two days or so, I just walk in there. So for two days, it, it'll accumulate. I got other stuff to do. Ellen. I know, you, you're a mother. You have, you have children. You have, you have girls who are how old now? Um, I have an eight-year-old, and then my six-year-old will be seven next week. And how are they doing? They are wonderful. They are at the age where they have so many thoughts and opinions, and it's like shocking and great, and we never edit our, edited ourselves around them. Like, we sort of sometimes will say swear words, and we explain to them that we're sorry, you shouldn't say those words, and they, like, hate it when we swear. They always call us out. They have all these wonderful opinions, like my soon-to-be seven-year-old asked me about two months ago, she, we were lying in bed and she said, how do I know you're my real mom? <laughs> and she was having like an existential thing. And I was like, I don't know any other way to prove it to you other than like, you lived in my body, I can show you the DNA proof. And she said, just how do I know you're not really a zombie and you're gonna peel my mom's face off and prove that you're a zombie? And I, I couldn't, prove that that wouldn't happen. Like, I, well, I was really stumped. And then, to boot, like, probably a week ago, I was in their bedroom, and I was, I was putting them down, and someone had left, like, a chair right by their bed, and I was like, good night, girls. And I went to kiss them good night, and I went, bam, right into this, like, teak hard chair and it bruised and like I thought I had broken my nose. I've never experienced that feeling before because it was pitch black and it felt like someone out of nowhere just smacked me in the face with a two by four. And then I had this big bruise and like my nose was swollen and the next morning she was like, I knew it. <laughs> she thought that this was the zombie coming out. The beginning out. of the zombie coming out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you went to go see Magic Mike, and uh, and I know that you were reluctant. In, <laughs> did I ever? In London, right? I did. I was doing a movie with um, Ben Platt, one of my favorites, Allison Janney and Karen Sony, and they suggested we go to see Magic Mike. And I was hesitant at first because I didn't feel like that would be my vibe. And I'm going to tell you, it was one of the best nights of my life. I mean, up there with having my children and getting married. <laughs> I felt electric. Wow. And it wasn't just because it was like, uh, whoa, it's a, there's a lot to unpack here. The show is so not what you think it is. If you ever have had a thought about what you thought the Magic Mike show was, it is like so body positive, like so female positive, so male positive, so every positive. It felt so good and the dancing was so beautiful and I just felt like I was on fire for it.
That's a great ad for that. That's a I'm great ad. I'm telling you, if you can go see Magic Mike, go see it. And there's a new show about it. We'll be watching that show, guys. <laughs> okay. I'm not here to promote Magic Mike. I have nothing to do with it. Well. But I loved it. I'm you, just a fan. You should have something to do with it, because that's a good promo. <laughs> Up there with, with my marriage and having children. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> go see Magic Mike. All right, we have to take a break. More with Kristen after this. That's Kristen Bell in... This is, this is, it's called, uh, it's on Netflix. The, the woman in the house across from the woman, no, the woman in the house. Across the street. Across the street from, from the, the girl woman, in the window. From the girl in the window. It's, it's a fantastic title. And it's, it's um, I, you tell people what it's about. But she's back because I called her, uh, texted her and said, <laughs> I love this show so much. And you're so fantastic in it. And I can see what a hard shoot it was for you too. Because you go through some stuff in it. But. It's just, it's, it's a whodunit, it's funny, it's, you say it. It makes me so, first of all, getting those texts was such a highlight for me because I don't think anyone has ever done this particular thing before. So it's a satirical slant on the psychological thriller. So I love psychological thrillers and mysteries and stuff, but there is something always sort of formulaic and absurd about it. She's always drinking way too much wine. No one believes her. She's constantly saying, I know what I saw. You know, like there's just so many pieces of the puzzle that you can predict. And so the show builds, like it's these building blocks of suspense while also increasing the absurdity. So you sort, we're poking fun at all of it from day one. And it, we had so much fun making it because around every corner, even like on the set, I'd be like, oh, you know when they do this, we should, do, you know, and I can't, it's very difficult to explain because I don't think this kind of a, a satire has been done before, but yeah. man, was it a blast. It, and, it's, and it also is a whodunit. You're wondering the, oh, yeah. the entire time. The actual mystery is really good. Yeah. That's the thing. It keeps you laughing, but you're genuinely like, wait, who done it? Yeah. And in these kind of like, you know, gone girl, girl on the train, they, they always, the women usually have some sort of an affliction, right? Like they're agoraphobic or they, in this one, um, she has ombrophobia, which is a fear of the rain, so every, which is real. So every time she needs to like find a clue or go outside, it starts to downpour and she like freaks out and passes out in the street. She's also obsessed with giving casseroles to her neighbors. Um, and this is Tom Riley, who is excellent in the show, who, you know, these things usually unfold where this woman is just like, every day is the same. She lost her family. She's drinking a lot of wine. And then uh, a, a handsome neighbor moves in. Well, what's going on over there, she says. And then she's peeking on them. What does she see? And it was just, it was so much fun to shoot, other than the fact that we had so many outdoor rain scenes. And I was like, oh. I was like wet. I, like, I, I thought about that the all the time. Shoot. I was like, oh my God, that is a hard shoot. And and the, just even the sex scene, I know we have to go to break, but the sex scene is every stereotypical, like in, you know, on the stairway, up against a wall, in the shower, and it's just all in one and scene. And that was shot in about two and a half hours. <laughs> and God bless my scene partner, Benjamin, because he was so lovely and respectful, but we were like, we're gonna do this, I guess we're gonna do this, because it was meant to be kind of gratuitous. Right. Because those are very romantic and gratuitous, so we yeah. just went for it. Y'all, you sure did, we see lots of your body, and you have a good body. Thank you very you much. Have a, you have an amazing body. Thank you, Alex. All right, we're gonna play a game after this.